Good morning, and welcome back to Margin. This morning, I want to talk to you about where your credit score comes from. So let's jump right into it. So in America, there are two main players in the credit scoring game, one of which is FICO and the other is Vantage Score. FICO originated in 1956 and uh, basically from that point did not come out with the actual scoring product until 1989. But FICO stands for Fair Isaac and Company and that that is the gold standard today. Uh, but a runner up per se uh, started in 2006 called Vantage Score. Vantage Score is basically a, uh, a rated rating agency for the three main bureaus. They, they basically went in and, uh, and built Vantage Score. So FICO has come up with a credit scoring mix that is comprised of five key components. Those five key components are weighted based on the level of importance to your FICO score. So the first one comes down to your payment history. Your payment history is 35% of this total score. The second aspect comes down to the amounts you owe, and that is 30% of your overall score. The third aspect comes down to the length of credit history, which is 15% of your total score. The fourth aspect comes down to new credit, which is 10% of your total score. And the last aspect comes down to the credit mix, which is 10% of your score. So the Fair Credit Reporting Act of 1970 was enacted in order to have accuracy, privacy, and fairness around the information being provided on our behalf with regards to anything related to credit. And so with this, this required that credit reporting agencies uh, only divulge that information on a need to know basis. So there are three main credit reporting agencies. The first one is Equifax, the second is TransUnion, and the third one is Experian. Equifax is actually the oldest of the three. It originated in 1899 under the name, uh, the Retail Credit Company, and later in 1975, got the name Equifax. Uh, TransUnion actually started in 1968 and Experian, surprisingly, started much later than that in 1980. And that was actually overseas. So it actually came over to the States in 1996. So according to Experian, three fourths of the population have a good credit score between 670 and 850. As you may recall, the range is 300 up to 850. So if three quarters of the population or close to uh, have a good credit score, that is, that's actually pretty impressive. So one of the primary focuses of margin is to open up options. And by opening up options, that means that uh, you're not closing the door on aspects like managing or maintaining your credit. So many people probably are thinking like, okay, well, why should I maintain my credit score? Uh, why is it important? And although you are being measured from a FICO standpoint on those five key components, there's other aspects in day-to-day -day life that this you know, maintenance of your credit score is actually important for. And that may be a minimum uh, requirement uh, for a position, like in my case. Uh, it could also be um, you know, qualifying for an apartment. It could be uh, your credit score being necessary for optimal insurance rates or, uh, or optimal rates on, on your car loan or your mortgage. So there's a myriad of different things that it, that it's valuable for, um, at least maintaining. And that's why, even though I'm in corporate finance, uh, even if I was outside of that vocation, um, I would still maintain it just so that it opens up options and so that I'm not boxed in. So my call to action today is for you to go actually pull your credit score. And you may want to use a third party resource like creditkarma.com, but it's important for you to go actually pull your credit score so you know where you stand. So if this information is helpful to you, please do like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that on a daily basis, uh, you can continue to improve on your personal finances, improve in your ability to handle your finances well, and to build margin into life. So thank you for your time. Have a great day and we'll see you back here tomorrow.